Hi, this is Josh at Pinoco. Today I want to provide you with an overview of how you can use our service to create laser cut designs. There are a range of things you can do with cutting flat materials. Here are some coasters laser cut out of felt. A pendant cut and engraved from bamboo. A puzzle engraved and cut from plywood. With a bit of sewing it's possible to start making more complex fabric products such as this card wallet cut and engraved from upholstery leather. It's also possible to interconnect laser cut flat sheets to create 3D objects like this laser cut spinning top, a plywood wine rack, or even this full size table. Objects this large and sturdy are a real challenge when designing with laser cut sheets but it's certainly possible. We're seeing a big rise in the number of laser cut products which are combined with electronics like this lamp or even cases for open source 3D printers such as the MakerBot. It's now also possible to combine laser cut pieces and 3D printed components to create a whole new category of digitally fabricated products. If you'd like to see more Pinoco made products to get inspired, you can check out our showroom via the buy link on our homepage. Now, let's look at getting started with Pinoco. Naturally, the first thing you need to do is sign up. The only unusual thing about our sign up form is that you'll need to select where you would like to have your products made. Naturally, this should be at the location closest to where you are, and you can change this later. Once you've signed up, you'll be delivered to your personal factory, where you can upload files, choose materials, and place your orders. One thing I'll quickly note is the Ask Us button on the left. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us via this button if you have any questions. Before we rock on, I want to quickly show you the US material catalogue. Let's look at some beginner materials. Corrugated card is great because it's cheap and very inexpensive to cut. Our colourful range of felts is really popular. Both styrene and PTG are great thin plastics for making stencils. Although metals at the top there tend to be a bit expensive for beginner projects and are also a lot trickier to design for. Acrylic is probably our most popular material type, again with lots of colour and thickness options. Note that the thicker the material, the longer it will take to cut and the more expensive your design will be. Veneer MDF provides a very consistent high quality of cutting and engraving and bamboo is probably our most popular wood. Each of the material pages has more info on them, such as the thicknesses available and the prices for each size. You can also get an idea of how much material is left between the cutting lines of different spacing and view engraving samples to give you a head start on visualizing how your design will turn out. It's often good to have that information in mind as you start to prepare your design. So on our Design It Yourself page, you'll find starter kits for the three main software packages used for 2D designs. Let's look closer at the instructions for Inkscape. The first thing you want to do is download our design templates. With the templates, you'll find three different files, one for each size, P1, P2, and P3. It's vital, particularly with Inkscape, that you create your design totally within our template, as there could be problems when it comes to uploading into our system if you don't. The actual content of your design is essentially visual instructions for telling the laser cutter how to create your design. We do this with lines and fills of different colours. A blue line tells the laser to cut along that line, so this bird shape would be cut out. The colour and stroke settings of your lines and fills are very important. Here are the settings for a cutting line in Inkscape. You need to ensure that your line is 0.01mm in width, and your colour is RGB 00255255. That's 255 blue, 0 red, and 0 green. The A stands for alpha channel and should always be at 255 whenever you're doing an Inkscape. We're able to do three types of vector line engraving, each using a different colour. Magenta for light line engraving, green for medium line engraving, and red for heavy line engraving. On the right hand side of the sample you can see the result of each of these on amber bamboo. Next we have raster fill engraving, which is denoted with a fill colour, not a stroke colour, and uses shades of grey. The most important thing here is that all of your R, G and B values match to be a perfect grey. Again we can see the results of the three standard fill engraving weights on the engraving sample. A pro tip is that you can actually use any shade of grey as long as your RGB values match and we simply provide these light, medium and heavy values for your reference. So a few last things about design file formatting. Any text you use in the design must be converted to paths or it will be ignored by the laser cutter. In Illustrator these are called outlines. The same is true for images. In Inkscape you need to use the trace bitmap tool to turn them into vector information the laser cutter can read. In Illustrator this is called live trace. 
If you're laying multiple pieces side by side, you can end up with more than one cutting line stacked on top of another, in which case you'll need to remove one of these. I won't go into the details here, but you can check out our step-by-step -step instructions in the starter kits. And finally, you need to save your files. This is very straightforward in Inkscape, but there are some elements you'll need to watch out for if you're using Illustrator or Corel Draw. So again, refer back to the starter kit before saving your file. So, let's create a simple design in Inkscape that's an example of all of this. The first thing I did was start up Inkscape and open the P1 template I downloaded from the Inkscape starter kit. You'll see on the right hand side of the template a summary of all the info we've just been through about how you need to format your design. To the left is the border that you need to create your design inside of. The easiest way to learn how to use Inkscape is to play with it. So in that spirit I'm going to create three very quick designs to give you a sense of some of the tools you can use. I'll start with a circle and then use the pen tool to draw an intersecting triangle. I'll select both of these shapes using the large arrow and use the path difference command to remove the triangle from the circle. Now I've either got the larger part of a pie chart or an 80s video game character which I can cut out say out of yellow acrylic. So that this can be cut out I need to change the color of the line. I'll use the Object Fill and Stroke command to open the Fill and Stroke panel on the right hand side of the screen. We saw this earlier when we were looking at the formatting that's required for different types of lines and fills. So in this case we need a 00255 blue line to make it a cutting line. So let's create another design. I'll start again with a circle and then a rectangle. I can use the circle at the top right of the rectangle to adjust how rounded the corners are. I'll now use the large arrow to select both of these objects and the path union command this time instead of difference to combine them into a single shape. To finish this little design off I'll use the spiral tool to draw a spiral funnily enough and I'll make sure that the color of the spiral is red 255 for a heavy vector line engraving. Which leaves us with a lollipop. For our last piece I'll use the rectangle tool again. Followed up with the text box tool. I'll type into here please knock and quickly format the text. I'll shift it to where I want it and I'll use the path object to path command as we talked about you have to turn your text into paths for the laser cutter to read it. We can then use the fill tab and the fill and stroke panel to change this to the level of raster engraving we want. In this case I'll use 128, 128, 128 which is medium raster engraving. To finish this piece off I want to draw two little circles It's come out with the fill color again. I can turn off the fill color by using the X in the fill tab. And I can duplicate my first circle by using the edit duplicate command. And I'll move one to the other side as I want to hang this from my door. Now the last thing I want to do before I can save my file is to select everything in the design and make sure all of the line thicknesses are correct. I click to stroke style, choose millimeters from the drop down on the width, and make this 0.01 millimeters. This file is now good to go, ready to be saved and uploaded to Pinoco. Now that we've finished our design, it's time to upload it. The first thing you'll need to do is select the design from your computer that you want to upload. Once selected, you click add this design. While your file is uploading, our automated system checks it for any obvious mistakes, like using the wrong shade of blue. If we pick up a problem, we'll let you know and point you to info on how to fix it. At this point, if you'd like to order more than one design at a time, you'll need to select another file. Any files you want to make at the same time need to be uploaded in the same batch. In this case, we'll click Done, which takes us through to the Edit a Design page. You don't need to worry about hardware and resources when getting started here, but click the question marks beside them for more info. Instead, let's add a material. We'll choose wood, 
the amber bamboo we were looking at earlier, 2.7 millimeters thick, and P1 size. Once we click add this material, we're given an instant price for making in materials to make our design on this amber bamboo. We can click the change button to get a new instant price on a different material, such as black acrylic or lime felt. We can also click the copy button to duplicate this entire design set, or show it to add it to our showroom to display, give away or sell. But in our case we'll click the make it button. First you're provided with a summary, including where our design is set to be made. Next we add our shipping details, and once you click the add billing button, you're provided with a price for shipping and any applicable taxes. Click the review and confirm button, and you're provided with the final confirmation with all of the details. Click the pay button to finish the order and get it into the Pinoco system. Now before we finish up, I'd like to run through some design tips with you, which you can find on that same Design It Yourself page that we found the starter kits. The number one tip is to prototype your designs. The only way to truly know how a given design will turn out on a given material is to try and make it. There are things you can do to make sure that first prototype is as good as possible though. One of those is to print your design out on paper. This is something I discovered when I tried to make business cards for the first time. The card on the left is the one I originally made with the wrong unit of measurement. I would have spotted this mistake if I'd printed my design out on paper at 100% scale before trying to send it through to Pinoco. You can also optimize your designs to keep the cost down. We talked earlier about placing pieces directly side by side and then removing the double cutting line between them. This is one way to keep your cutting costs down. When engraving, raster fill engraving takes a long time to do, and time equals cost when it comes to your making cost. What you can do is either not use raster fill engraving and stick to vector line engraving instead, or the other option is to keep all of your raster fill engraving as close together as possible, which will keep your cost down. If you want your design to use the whole sheet of material, consider putting a cutting line around the outside of the white area of the template to make sure it's a straight and even edge. We've also finally got here some links to check out about overly detailed cutting, improving your engraving results, and making sure 3D projects fit together well. So check those out if you want to do any of those things. Finally, let's look at where you can find more information. Firstly, there's the Pinoco blog, which is full of stuff about the future of making and tips for making with Pinoco. We've got an extensive list of FAQs for you to read through. You can join the community forum and connect with other makers, or you can connect with us through Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, etc. We've got a bi-weekly email newsletter you can sign up for, and of course, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us, and we'll answer your question as quickly as we can. So I hope that's provided you with the base tools to get started making laser cut designs with Pinoco. Happy making!